down today because my head is hurting. But I wanted to talk about a couple things in my videos. There's like two things, uh, Kratom and my ER visits. So because I know last video I said I would bring up like what happened in the ERs. So I'll go with those first. Sorry, I adjust myself. So, okay, so I used to go to the ER a lot. Like when I say a lot, I mean a lot. And you know, people would thought, you're just there to get drugs and stuff. And I'm like, no, I was in pain. Like, okay, if people don't... For the people that don't know my channel, I am a chronic pain patient. I have rheumatoid arthritis, stage 4 endometriosis, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, and PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I got a lot going on. So anyway, um, oh, ooh, that sounded bad, didn't it? So I used to go to ER a lot. Well, it started in like 2014 to 2016 era was like where I went a lot like the specialists wouldn't do anything they would it they would not you know treat me they would just say you're fine you need to exercise you're fat you know and I struggle with an eating disorder so that doesn't help so I was just so mad like you know nobody would listen to me PCP would like I got admitted a couple times but not not all the time like it'd be just ER visits something they would normally treat my pain and then leave but then towards 2016 is when the CDC opioid guidelines came out where if you went to the ER, they would not treat your pain by giving just giving you a Tylenol and that's it and leave. Well, I was in a lot of pain and I actually got blacklisted at St. Mary's Mercy in Livonia, Michigan. But thankfully a doctor, whom I'm not going to name, got my name off the list because she knew I'm not a drug addict. So I used to go all the time there because I lived over there. I would go to the same hospital, but then after that I had to go to a different hospital when it was bad because I didn't know what to do. You know, I was in so much pain and felt like each, um, each flare-up I felt like I was going to die. Like I said, this is it, I'm going to die. But I didn't, you know, but you feel like you're going to die when your body's like hurting and it's on fire and it feels like someone like dropped acid on you and stabbed you and stuff. So I, um was blacklisted there and um, recently they just took it off which I'm re really blessed because it shows you right there I'm not an addict they gave me a stupid piece of paper called complex patient opioid use disorder because I used to go there all, all the time and I was in pain and they gave me Dilaudid or morphine on Zofran they considered Zofran as a narcotic I'm like what you know so I was furious like I said I'm in pain I'm not a drug addict I don't like the feeling of morphine or Dilaudid in the IV it makes me feel really weird and I didn't like it it helped the pain like Dilaudid especially helped the pain but you know they would not give it to me anymore so they try to do ketamine and that shit effed me up like it was horrible I hated that shit you know I was hallucinating and I was thinking I was gonna die I didn't like it so they tried that because they thought, well, if she wants to get here and get high, we'll give her ketamine. And I hated it. I said, I don't want to, no ketamine, please. I, I don't like feeling high. So it shows you right there. I don't like getting high. I would be a terrible drug addict. You know, and like I said in my previous videos, that drug addicts deserve help. They do, as well as chronic pain patients. We should be all treated equally, but differently. We should have a different case. Drug addicts have a recovery case. Well, chronic pain patients have their case to manage their pain. I know some drug addicts are chronic pain patients, but that's less than 1%, which is very low. So a lot of the time people will say, well, I got addicted after surgery um, with my Norcos or uh, Vicodin or whatever. I'm like, well, did you get high off your meds? No. I just took them all the time because I was in pain. Well, that's different. That means you're just dependent, you know. Dependent is, you know, where you, like I said, insulin. Diabetics are dependent on insulin and asthma patients are dependent on their inhalers or medicine just like antidepressants So it's just dependency, you know, those two really People need to get educated about it. Just look up dependency and addiction addiction The main purpose is to get high and you sell your meds or you uh, Sell your body, you know, it's that's horrible, you know, it's just it's a really sad case with addiction But it's also sad that chronic pain patients are being denied help not too long ago, um, I recently, not recently, about a year or two ago, I recently got into a fight with one of my friends um, who was a recovering drug addict. And I met her through rehab, not drug rehab. I was um, at a nursing home, a rehab, uh, rehabilitation nursing home. I was having a lot of fall spells and they admitted me for two weeks there. 
So this girl uh, was there. She had pneumonia really bad, and she overdosed a couple times from heroin, and she had pneumonia really bad, so they put her in rehab for about a week or two, and she was going through withdrawals. I'll never forget. She was yelling, and it was sad, you know, but uh, she was very nice. We were, like, really good friends, and um, I was writing about the opioid crisis back in 2017 because I went there in 2015 or 2016. I forgot. So back in 2017, when uh, Don't Punish Pain was founded, I think I knew a little bit of it, and I was talking about, like, oh, this opioid crisis is terrible. I said, you know, it's unfair that we're being treated like drug addicts when we're not, and it really upset her, and I didn't mean to upset her. Let me put this down. And uh, she's like, you don't understand. I was an addict, and we need to ban opioids because it's going to make drug addicts fall back to our relapses. I felt like saying... Okay, I understand that you are a drug addict, you know, you're in recovery, I can't imagine what you're going through, but you can't imagine what we're going through, that we have to be punished because of your behavior. Like, I'm not saying that, oh, you know, F drug addicts, I don't care about them, not at all. They deserve help, but that shouldn't mean that because you're projecting your um, problems onto me because you can't control yourself with, you know, taking drugs. Like, I'm not trying to be insensitive but I'm trying to, they're being insensitive by saying we need to ban opioids because I can't control myself or I'll go back into relapse it's like what about us you know we're in pain you know there's suicides due to pain there's veterans who are denied pain medicine and they fought for our freaking country and they should deserve they deserve pain meds they deserve first priority and that pisses me off so um back to the ER um I got admitted a couple times and all they found was cysts on me so they did diagnose me back then with uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome but um, when I went to my first, my not my first, my OB currently I have now she diagnosed me with stage 4 endo and I was under the knife for 4 hours when it was supposed to be an hour or an hour and a half surgery so yeah so during the time between 2018 or 2017 to 2018 I um, was seeing a primary care physician and she put me on Tylenol 4 with codeine, you know. And I took it twice a day and I took it as prescribed. And she was a woman doctor. There's a, um, a family medicine doctor. There's, there's a husband and wife that run the clinic and it's kind of shady now because of the husband. And I still go to him, but I'm trying to find a new PCP. But it's hard to find when I actually have a note up here to call some doctors. But I recently had to go to him and go over my blood work, but I'll tell you about him. He's a story. So I had this lady, she was really understanding. She knew that I was in a lot of pain. And during my hip injury, she did give me Tylenol 4s every month. Go in, give a drug test. She check it, you're good, here's a script, take it. What was a pain was getting the medication. She would fill 60 tabs a month, so twice a day. So remember, technically it's a month's worth because you're doing it twice a day. One p tablet, twice a day. So it was a pain to just get them. I would call pharmacies like, can I fill this? And, oh, we don't have it in stock. That was like the newest thing. So the only place I could go to, I had to go 20 miles out of my way just to fill fucking Tylenol 4. And it was Walmart. And Walmart gave me such such a hard time they would just say why are you on this you shouldn't be on this this is like your fourth month you've been on this i said look i have chronic pain you know and i was using a cane too or a walker because i was having really bad pain days during the winter it gets really bad and they're like well you should really you know try like a uh, tylenol or a strong ibuprofen which i'm allergic to NSAIDs if you don't know especially toward all i get rashes all the way up to here and then I also bruise a lot, and I um, have blood in my stool, so it's not good. I can take Tylenol, but it doesn't fucking work. I mean, yes, it might help with, like, a minor headache, but does it help with my chronic pain? No. Like, I know there's some people that will take arthritis strength, and it does help them, which is great, but I wish it would help me. But I just, it doesn't. You know, everyone's body is different. And there's some chronic pain patients that shame other chronic pain patients for taking opioids. And I don't like that. Where they say, oh... Well, I don't take opioids. You shouldn't because you'll get addicted. It's like just because you can handle your pain a different way with Tylenol or or marijuana, the marijuana culture I hate. You know, I'm all for marijuana, recreationally and medically. However, do not shove it down my throat that it will help me. I smoked weed like several times, different strains, sativa, indica, indica hybrid, sativa hybrid, edibles, 
uh, waxes, dabs, you know, nothing helped. I mean, it numbed the pain, but I didn't like feeling high. It was the worst feeling, and I got paranoid. I have depression and anxiety, so that doesn't help. So I'm all for medical marijuana. If it helps you, great, but don't shove it on people if it doesn't work. So I, one day, I got a private message from one of my friends that is vegan. I no longer talk to her because... I'm not a vegan anymore, so they sh they shunned me, right? You know, a lot of anim most animal rights activists will shun you if you're no longer vegan because I was in the hospital due to malnutrition. My potassium was low. I almost had a blood uh, transfusion because my iron was so darn low. So I had to go back on my regular diet, like animal products. I mean, I don't eat a lot. I mean, I eat a lot of vegetables. I know I try not to eat a lot of meat, but it's good. I'm sorry. Don't tell the vegans. So anyway, I did get a message from my friend that was, my ex-friend that is a vegan, right? And she told me, because I was, to, I told um, on my Facebook, I talk about my chronic pain journey. And I said, oh, I, I said, I don't know what to do. They cut me off my pain pills. So this is the part. So the woman doctor switched to go to urgent care. They owned an urgent care down the road. And uh, so the husband took over and the husband was not keen on pain medications at all. Because last time he was there, he wasn't going to refill it, but he saw it was on my chart, so he did. So when I went there this one day, he comes in, he's like, okay, we're going to take you off your pain medication, like cold turkey. I, I was freaking out. I said, can you, like, at least, like, wean me off? And he's like, okay, you got one month to, uh, we'll just give you, like, two days. I'm like, two days? So they gave me two days, so four, four pills. So I had to basically go off cold turkey, and I went through the worst withdrawal and it's still, it doesn't matter if you're, you're dependent. Like, I get withdraw I went through a withdrawal on Prozac about two months ago. It's horrible. So it doesn't really matter what medicines. Even people that get off caffeine, like, get agitated or nicotine, you know. So I remember my friend wrote me. I said, I, um, I wrote on my Facebook. I said, I can't believe my doctor took me off pain medication to cold turkey. And I'm going through the worst withdrawal. I had diarrhea. I was sweating. It was horrible. I felt I was throwing up. I felt sick. And my pain was worse than ever, you know? So my friend says to me, have you tried Kratom? I'm like, Kratom? What's that? I, I think I've heard of it, but I didn't know really what it was. So um, I left my phone over there. I was going to read about it. Hold on for a minute. Let me grab it. Okay. So Kratom is a natural supplement. It's legal um, for people over 21 and... Uh, the DEA likes, wants to ban it because it's natural and the big pharma can't make money off of it. Almost kind of like how they put a pro prohibition on marijuana. They want to do this on uh, uh, Kratom. So I'm going to look up Kratom right now. We're going to ask Google, what is Kratom? According to Wikipedia, Mitragena speciosa is a tropical evergreen tree in the coffee family native to Southeast Asia. So it is part of the coffee and tea family. And I actually have a little bit to show what it looks like. So I am running low. So I get it on a vendor online. No spawn, but the Golden Monk, they're everything. I love them. Their customer service is great. Their quality is great. So Kratom looks like this. If Sorry if the color is bad. Let me see if I can turn on the light. Um, smells, it smells like green tea. I'm trying to see if you can see it unless I... So that's the powder. It's green. It's like green tea. It looks like green tea. It smells like green tea. It smells like tea. If you drink drink tea and smell like raw tea, it smells like that. It smells like green tea. So what you do is I recommend for people that have chronic pain to try this. I'm not shoving it down anyone's throat. I just recommend like if let's say you get cut off your pain meds or, you know, you can't get them, especially Kratom helps with withdrawal. So right after she told me, I went up to the... You know, the smoke station by my house is very legit. They have certifications that they've tested it several times. Like, they went through, like, a process to make sure that it was a, a good kratom, like, you know, no poison in it. Because don't buy it from the gas station. That's dangerous. They could put drugs in there. But if you buy it from a reputable vendor, even online, I will even uh, put the link in the description where I buy from. They're really good. They're... A little bit pricey, but you get a lot for your buck, and it's great quality, and you don't have to use a lot. So um, so what I do is I recommend the red strain to start off with chronic pain, especially at night. So if you have a hard time falling asleep at night, 
I recommend Red Mangda, M-A-E-N-G-A, Mangda, D-A, red, like the red strain. And there's also Red Bally is good too. And what it does is it's a little like, it's like a melatonin, I always say. So what I do is um, to start off, I would do one teaspoon. You take a teaspoon measure. Uh, I don't have that either. I'm not, I'm not uh, prepared for this. But you take a teaspoon and you measure it. Make sure you measure it, like how, you're, you, know, how you bake or whatever. Measure it. Mix it in a drink, non-alcoholic, you know. I recommend a citrus drink, lemonade, orange juice. I know a lot of people say orange juice, apple juice, even apple juice. I mean, I don't know if that's citrus, but anything that's citrus or, or juice and mix it. I'm trying to, I would blend it, especially, I would just use uh, lemonade or orange juice because I had a friend who has MS and she uh, actually used lemonade and it worked and she didn't taste anything because it tastes bitter. It doesn't taste gross. It's just really bitter and powdery. So people always say, well, about the toss and wash method, I don't recommend that if you're a beginner. I recommend to take one teaspoon, you mix it in, or use a blender to really mix it in so you don't taste the powder, and pour it in. Uh, you have to drink, I recommend you drink it within 10 minutes because if you want the effects to work faster, it will work within like 10, 15 minutes depending on your uh, body. So that, and then let's say if it doesn't work, like one teaspoon doesn't work, wait a half hour, if that doesn't work, do another teaspoon. You cannot overdose on Kratom. There is times where you can get sick if you take too much, like kind of like a, a hangover, like you know how when you drink too much alcohol, you throw up. It's not like alcohol. I mean, it, if you take too much, you'll throw up, you'll get sick and you'll get the wobbles. And what that is, is you'll feel dizzy and you're like kind of, you know, like falling over. You don't want to take too much. I recommend like two teaspoons two or three times a day but please space it out they always say two to four hours and um so the toss and wash method and then there's also capsules but i'll be honest the capsules don't work but i do recommend if you do not want to drink it you know it's hard or the toss and wash where you put it in there and swish it around and swallow it that's what i do and i'll even show you on camera because i haven't taken it in a while my legs are hurting so i'll show you how i do it but um there's uh, Amazon, I will also link in the description. It's called the uh, Al Oblate Discs. And what it is, it looks like a piece of plastic. And you take your cranium, measure it, put it on the piece of plastic, it's edible. And you wrap it up into like a parachute. And you put it, in, so it's like a thin plastic. So you, I would wrap it up twice, like uh, put one on top and put one on top and like kind of make it like into a candy wrapper, you know? Then you pop it in your mouth and uh, take a, uh, you know, drink, any type of drink like water or juice and just down it and it'll go down. It'll feel like a big lump, but it'll work like better than capsules because capsules are in gel and they're thick and, and, and it'll dissolve more gel than the um, Kratom itself. And I know a lot of people say, 75% of people say it don't work, uh, but the toss and wash, um, let me go show you. So what I do is I use Gatorade a lot. I do not use uh, plain water because I learned the hard way. <laughs> uh, let me go get my purse. Let me get my uh, spoon out. So you get a teaspoon. Okay, where is it? Oh, it's in the purse. I just got this new purse and uh, I don't know where anything's at. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> Excuse the decor and mess in the background. Okay, so here's the Kratom. This is the toss and wash. I recommend doing this once you're used to taking Kratom. Kratom works like an opioid. It's like, you know how you if you take a pain med and it helps? It, it I swear by you it works. As a chronic pain patient, I've been taking Kratom for two or three years now, and it is a godsend. Like, if I get cut from my meds, I'll take this, but some days it, it just doesn't work because my... It does not help my endo pain, but if you have arthritis or fibro, it is a godsend. It's a miracle plan. I thank God for this plan, you know, and I recommend you just trying it. If you don't like it, there's also like green strains. So I have green strain. What that is, what's different about a red strain and green strain is red strain you take at night and it'll like make you sleepy and it'll help the pain and you go to bed. Green is like you take a shot of espresso or drink of coffee, you know, drink some coffee and it this takes on your day. So I do this in the morning and daytime. 
So it's about, uh, what time is it? It's 5 o'clock. So I stop taking it around 7 or 8 because it'll keep me up at night. So I can take it between 5 and 6. So I haven't taken it in a while. And I don't think my new shipment of Kratom came today. I'm really pissed. The USPS is always not delivering it on time. So I probably won't get it till Monday. So I'm just going to go to Wild Bills down the road and just get a little jar. I'm so mad. Because I have to put more money out. And I need it though because I just started a new job. I um. I just uh, got a job at Five Below, and uh, if I'm on my feet a lot, I take the supplement. I let people know it's a supplement because I don't want them saying, oh, what the hell are you taking, you know. But I let even my coworkers know back in the day. I had this coworker who I'm not going to name. I used to work at an unemployment agency, and she had really bad chronic pain. I felt really bad for her. She also had five screws in her back due to um, a really tragic, traumatic uh, marriage, which I'm not going to get into. But um, I recommend Kratom to her, and she didn't want to try it, so her loss, like, I hope I hope she, like, remembers it, unless she was already on medicine and she didn't want it, so, but I don't, I don't, like, shove it on people. I do recommend it, though, if you are cut or not on pain meds whatsoever, I would try this and see if it works. There's different strains, like, you can just try each strain, but I would go to uh, a vendor, which is uh, the Golden Monk. Um, I don't know if they have sample packs. What you can do is they do have a customer service number. You can call them and say, hey, I've never tried Kratom before. I don't want to spend $40 on 250 grams, which equals 8 ounces, which is a really good price because uh, the Kratom at the smoke shop, 8 ounces is uh, $60. I'm like, yikes. So it's cheaper. It's like in a big bag you get, or sometimes they come in a bottle. Um, just let them know, say, do you have sample packs for like a couple bucks or I think... I think the sample packs are like six bucks. I think they have them still. If not, uh, there's another one I recommend. Uh, recommend, but the only thing is the Golden Monk accepts credit cards. Uh, a lot of kratom vendors online don't accept credit cards. Only e check um, is because, or money orders because uh, credit card companies don't like to purchase kratom. They think it's a drug, which is not. The FDA is trying to schedule it as a substance two, like Schedule Two, I think it's called. So, okay, so I got my Kratom. So see how I measured it? Make sure it's completely measured. It's hard to see, hold on. Sorry, my lighting sucks. I will eventually get better lighting once I get the money. So what you do is, I have my Gatorade here. So what I do is I have to, my mouth is always dry. Okay, so wet, wet your mouth now. So, this is going to probably take me about 30 seconds to 60 seconds, so bear with me. So, take the spoon, I'm going to turn, and go like this. There. Before, I don't recommend this to beginners because you'll gag and you might throw up because it's bitter. It doesn't taste. It doesn't taste bad. I apologize for drool, drooling if I did. My hair is so hot. Um, I don't recommend this for beginners because you might gag and throw up. So I recommend just mixing it or if you want to use capsules, that it does work for you. But the oblate discs, they're like this, like a circle, like a. It's like plastic, but it's not. It dissolves in your system. It's like you wrap for powders, and I'm going to link it, like I said. I'll link the vendor, and I'll link the um, Amazon. It's on Amazon. I think it's like it's between 6 and $10, and it comes with like a 50 or 100 count. I'm not for sure, but um, they're good if you don't, or if you want to just mix it in your drink. You can even mix it in this, but I recommend to get the Oblate Discs because it does taste like shit. It just, um, it's, it doesn't taste like rope. I mean... It's just very, very bitter and very powdery. So when I do it, I have to make sure it completely dissolves in my mouth. That's why it takes a little longer because I gotta shake 
and it'll dissolve. And when I feel like it's ready to be dissolved or if it's ready to swallow, I'll swallow it. Because if you don't, uh, if you go fast, um, and I also recommend if you do do the toss and wash, make sure you have a room temperature. Because if you have sensitive teeth, it's going to be horrible. <laughs> so don't use pop. It has to be like Gatorade or water if you want to. Someone said another thing is you can mix a Kratom and chocolate milk and it helps, which I tried. It's gross. Don't do it. I don't know who said that. And they must have not, I don't know if they're not okay in the head, <laughs> but everyone's different. So anyways, uh, thanks for, uh, I just want to say, uh, this is the end of my video and I just wanted to say thank you for people, uh, that have commented or shared my video. All, all, all my videos go on Twitter and Facebook. I, I cannot give out my, uh, username right now due to, uh, uh can't really talk about it because I don't know if this person's watching. Um, it was a cyber stalking incident with an ex online friend whom I'm not going to name. I'm not going to get into it at all. So I'm trying not to give out like any information about like my social media accounts because I don't feel like being harassed and my number already got doxxed. So I had to change my number. It was horrible, but, um, that's pretty much it. And if my comments are ever turned off, it's not because I don't want people to leave hate comments. Like, not that doesn't really bother me. It's just that person. I don't want her finding out my channel and starting drama when I haven't talked to her in, like, several months. And I haven't talked to anyone about her. I just ended a friend. It was because it was toxic. It was, I went to bed early and she assumed I was ignoring her and I was tired of going through that. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not getting into it because it's in the past. I forgive her. Hope she forgives me. I mean, I don't know what I did wrong just to go to bed early. But anyways, I love Gatorade. But yeah, try the Kratom. Like I said, I'll link the descriptions on both things down below. And if you're a chronic pain patient suffering by doctors and incompetent doctors and ER physicians or specialists, visit the link. I'm also going to link it down in the description. The don't punish pain rally.com web website god i'm so sorry i stutter a lot that will help you will feel less alone and i would also encourage you to join twitter i mean if you're not a social media fan but i i really recommend twitter because there's so many chronic pain patients that unite and the support makes me cry like i've seen people support one another and that's how i met my warrior friends my pain warrior friends through the rally on october 7th in my last video it was just incredible it was truly incredible how the internet and you know the universe connects everyone but um i just wanted to say thank you and i hope everyone hangs in there this season i'm so sorry about coronavirus pandemic how it just destroyed everything this year and for my arthritic patients please hang on during the winter time i know it's going to be bad but Please try the Kratom. If it doesn't work, um, it doesn't work. But I, I, I do say it works. Like I know a couple arthritic patients, especially RA patients, that said that helped me a lot. It helped strengthen my hands. Like my hands don't hurt right now at all from taking that. It's already kicking in. It takes, it kicks in within like five to ten minutes, depending on your body. So, anyways, um, have a great night, and I'll talk to you next time. Okay, bye.